Hello and welcome to Arcade Spirits Episode 7. Uh, I have a confession to make. I have already played through uh, Chapter 7 and Chapter 8, but I forgot to turn my mic on. So, you know, instead of like trying to time exactly when to say things and try to remember the quips that I had made during the play, I decided that I'm just going to re-record them uh, to the best of my ability. I'm going to try to remember what choices I made so that it's still kind of like the same play. Uh, I'm just not 100% sure I can remember exact choices that I made, so we'll see. Alright, I guess it's time to get started. Level 7, New Game Plus. It is the distant future year 20XX, and for the first time I am entirely in control of my destiny. I am no longer merely working in an arcade, now I am working on my future, which admittedly still involves working in an arcade, but still my future. I'll admit it feels weird, I've grown used, so used to going with the flow, letting life batter and bruise me, that having a true and honest hand on the controls is a bit terrifying. Everyone's counting on me to keep the flame of Miss Francine's funplex alive as we move into the era of arcade spirits. And well, I'm nervous. Who wouldn't be? There's so much writing on the success of arcade spirits. Not just a paycheck, but the hopes and dreams of all my friends. And I can't forget about Queen Bee's hopes and dreams in particular. I'm not the only one anxious about this. The stress weighs heavily on both of us. I don't want to let her down. I keep waiting for the universe to wake up and notice that I'm on a roll. If fickle fate could take away the funplex, what could it do to arcade spirits? I know that's hardly a constructive attitude to have, but anxiety is rarely a logical thing. You can know the truth, while your nerves tell you something else entirely. Now all that's left is to get through opening day without incident. I arrived early that morning to go over any last minute preparations and make sure everything is in order. Plus, Juniper was sick of watching me pace back and forth at home after breakfast. So she lovingly shoved me out of the apartment and told me to be productive. Now I stood in awe of the building, the dream I poured my heart and soul into. I still barely believed it myself. I paused a moment to let the reality finally hit me and then stepped into my destiny. Pushing open the doors to Arcade Spirits, I was greeted by relative peace and quiet. Just the beeps and boops and the people moving about doing last-minute preparations. We traveled a long and arduous road ever since the great wake to Renspiracy. Gavin secured us a great rental space, an abandoned pizza place with an all-too-familiar triangular roof. Nobody else wanted it, but we didn't care about the funny shape. Quirk is in our favor. And I really couldn't have done all the renovations this place needed without the help of our financial benefactor. Hamza proved true to his word, fronting us as much money as we needed to make this happen. And now we've got a family restaurant and arcade to rival Teco's Palace. Well, okay. It's very small compared to Deco's Palace, but quality over quantity. We went with a familiar layout. It ain't broke and all that. To show that we've still got the spirit and passion that made the Funplex great. 
but it's not all a carbon copy. We've got a few new additions that Francine would even be proud of. The video wall is a nice touch. That one was my idea. It alternates between running music videos, game promos, and high score leaderboards. We also repainted and did a general update on all the appliances and fixtures to give it more of a finished feel, and less of a retired pizza place turned arcade vibe. Naomi and Percy worked together to pick out games with a decidedly retro feel. Considering Deco's focus on tickety, gambling-ish games, this helps us stand out from the competition. She put in a lot of hard work restoring them, and truthfully, we've run into a lot of problems along the way. But watching her tirelessly working to perfect them is inspiring. As for Tomogi's experiment into advanced streamer support, well, I'm unsure of how this will pan out, but she's confident in it. Such confidence is contagious. She's invited a few big-name streamers to drop in on opening day and broadcast from her makeshift little studio. That'll build up some buzz for the arcade far and wide. All of my decisions, all of my choices, made this. Made Arcade Spirits what it is. So much labor and love went into the project from all of us, and now all that's left is to officially open these doors. But before that fateful hour begins, I still want to do one last check on operations. Just in case. The restaurant side of this equation proved to be very complicated. I'd go cross-eyed trying to parse the numbers of that side of the business. Hopefully it wouldn't drive us to bankruptcy or the arcade wouldn't bankrupt the restaurant or both at the same time. Hark! The great Hamza senses concern from his business partner. Perfection! Rest assured, diva in your face, that Hamza has seen to all that requires seeing to, where delicacies shall ring true across taste buds across the city. I'm not sure I would consider burgers and buffalo wings as delicacies. Hamza is aware we shall never earn five stars with our cuisine, but we shall be the pinnacle of deep-fried foodstuffs. Today, Hamza will oversee operations. Beyond this opening day, I leave you in the hands of my capable shelves and wait stuff. But you'll be in touch, right? I'd hate to have you jet off to, like, Inst uh, Istanbul, but not, Constant not Constantinople, and suddenly everything is on fire. <laughs> no matter what corner of the globe Hamza's travels take him to, he can be summoned at the speed of light. Well, at the speed of air travel, really. And now, back to my kitchen, our glorious future together is in business awaits. Hamza claps twice before leaving in a flourish. Okay, being partners with Hamza is going to take some getting used to. Running a restaurant and an arcade is riskier than I thought it'd be. But for this, but for all his quirkiness, he knows business, right? He's rich. Rich people are smart, right? After my quick check-in, I notice the clock. It's unforgiving hands telling me that it's not long now. Okay, breathe, diva. Calm down. Everything's clearly under control. There's no need to freak out. We're just mistaking excitement for terror. This is exciting. It's a happy day. The first day of arcade spirits. You can do this. You can do this. No. With all of us working together, we can do this. As long as no unforeseen problems pop up. Diva! If I'm going to be torn away from my contemplations, I'm sure happy it's by the most loveliest of voices. I gladly turn my attention to Tommy and I smile. I just finished making sure everyone's overlays are at perfection, and let the arcade spirits ads play in between matches. <sighs> God, that was a lot of work. Not bad. I don't know how you managed everything, but you did. Do you have a moment? I wanted to show you something. My moment of chill is interrupted when I notice she's holding an envelope in her hands. I don't 
know what's in there, but immediately I get a bad feeling about it. I mean, who even uses the postal system anymore? Unless it's bills, scams, or other bad news. So, I received this letter in the mail from the Four Heavenly Kings. Can you believe that? Who the caca even uses snail mail anymore? I was thinking exactly that, minus the swears, of course. Anyway, that's not important. What's important is opening this here with you. Like, right now? <laughs> right before grand opening? Yeah, is that a problem? I figured we could celebrate together. I'm sure they're sending me some sort of promotion or invite to some huge-ass tournament. We're celebrating opening day so we could join forces and commemorate our victories together. Except now is not an ideal time. I would love nothing more than enjoying a moment that isn't the constantness of, that is arcade spirits, but there are a million and one other things I should be doing. Ugh, I'm at a crossroads. I think I picked this one. To heck with it, the curiosity is killing me, and I need to know what's in there. I, I can't wait any longer. Hurry up and open it. Yeah. Yes, let's see what this baby has in store. Here we go. In one fell swoop, Tonvi rips open the envelope and hastily removes the paper inside. She begins reading it out loud. It has been an honor having you as part of the four heavenly kings. You've already learned so much, and in turn, we've learned from you, too. To further all of our knowledge, we think it best for all the kings and queen to be under the same roof. Therefore, Queen Bee, you are cordially invited to move into our team house. Tanvi takes a moment to let the words sink in. She's stunned, but eventually her excitement pulls her lips into a grin. God, God, this is huge! And what does that mean exactly? Team house? What's that? Oh, right. A, a team house is where all the members of the team, me and the rest of 4HK, live together, play together, eat and drink together. Everything is done as a team. The pit crawls in my stomach, and it reads all over my face. <laughs> Don't worry, Diva. It's not like we're going to be cacaing together. There are separate bathrooms. The joke fails to make light of a very serious situation at hand. So we'd have to move to wherever the house is located, right? And that's not in this city, let alone this state, right? Noting my dissatisfaction, Tonvi tries to simply dismiss it. Yeah, but this is going to boost my skills to the next level. All the most prominent winning FOD teams live together. It's the next step of my career. Fantastic. Trust me, this is kind fantastic news. Is it? I let the words plummet from my mouth without hesitation. And seeing Tonvi's immediate frown, I instantly regret it. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? What about us? You know, you and me? Keeping a relationship going across state lines would be difficult, right? Can't exactly keep the romance alive through video chats and text messages. Try me! Excuse me? Since when did I agree to chain myself down? Have I not spent time and energy supporting you endlessly and making your dream come true with this arcade? Have I not cheered you on when you needed it? And you can't even give me the same respect in return for my dreams? If you can't... <sighs> Tanvi snorts and then sighs. Maybe I should just go then. No, 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 no. It's not what I wanted. My heart wrenches but you moving would it would mean I wasn't ready for this <laughs> I remember this uh yeah I think I did the heart 
And I think I also went on like this huge rant last time about how um, this first one, it's like, don't you think this is a bit selfish of you? And it's like, your character that you're playing is the one that's being like horribly selfish because from the beginning of this relationship, from the beginning, Queen Bee was like, hey, I want to take things slow and I don't want any labels. Like, she was super upfront about what she wanted from the, like, what she was expecting from this relationship. And honestly, like, even though it was like a casual, not casual relationship or whatever, I, I don't know, I don't know names for things. And it, it wasn't like friends with benefits, but it was a very caring thing from what I can, I guess from the clues that we have from their relationship and she is being really supportive of you she is being like she she's given up like a lot to be to to support you and this is going and, and like she said this is going to like skyrocket her career and her skills and th this is her dream is to build her herself uh, in the FOD scene and that is if that is your dream you even though you are technically you are partners in a sense without the label of partner you don't have a right to dictate what she can and cannot do with her dream so calling her selfish is just so stupid like, you do not deserve to be in a relationship at all if you think that your partner doesn't deserve to take their dream to the next level because it would infringe on you. And that that's you are the selfish one. So I... I am 100% against the first choice. Uh, and the second one, it's just like, yeah, we definitely need to talk about this, but right now is not the time to talk about this, but this just seems like it's just a bad choice. So I'm going to go with this one. If Chanfei leaves, I'll be all alone. Again, I want to respect her right to make her own choices. I just don't think I can let her walk right out of my life without trying to figure this out. I understand you've got aspirations and dreams the same as I do, and I admire that truly. Your passion inspires me, but Sunbi, I've also grown so attached to you. Seem so forgotten by me as well. Is there some way we can make this work for her? Uh, I think so. Uh. It's hard to touch me and all, but really, we haven't discussed this in terms of us yet. And here you are talking about being together forever. Uh, this line here is the reason I broke up with my uh, my first ex. <laughs> Along with all that lovey-dovey bull caca. Remember, we talked about keeping this strictly label-free. I really don't feel comfortable with all this talk. See? See? From the beginning. From the beginning. She told you up front. You have no excuse. But I love you. And that's the wrong thing to say. Be honest briefly. Even if we agreed to part ways, I love her. And she probably doesn't want to hear that, but I can't help myself. I can no longer fight those feelings. If this is what you want, who am I to tell you? It's what you've always dreamed of, and you should follow your heart. But my heart wants to be here. With you too. It'll be bittersweet watching you tell her your dreams, 
I'll be cheering you on from here. Oh, that scene back there it was devastating. My heart breaks that the mayor thought of it. His family won't help, even if we go our separate ways. I love you, Sandy. Truly. I hope saying it again made it seem real. And concrete to you. Both of us went silent for a long time, each listening in an embarrassed kind of way. The feelings and emotions happening right now are claiming me. Discussing this any further here and now will only make matters more complicated. I still have to overcome these spirits. Listen, maybe we should take a few minutes to reflect and come back and talk about this after the day is over. Okay? The problem is that I have to open the door again. Fifteen minutes ago. It's okay to leave things to me, Sandy. I need to focus my attention on it for the moment. Fine. It's fine. I should be checking in with streamers anyway. We'll talk later, maybe. Before I can apologize for, for ever arranging this, Sandy dismisses herself from the conversation. Sandy's trying to use her strength to run down the post office for a moment. I can't handle this right now. As much as I want to stop everything and sort through this mess, I, I've got a job to do today. There will be time later to talk things out with Sandy. Presumably. I need to at least try to put this turmoil behind me, so I can focus on the first day of our kids here as kids as family. Despite reeling from that incident just now, despite my nerves, I'm ready to do this. Because I have to. I have that big plan for the opening ceremony I plan to do today. I need to open the door, give my prepared speech to the gathered masses, and stay on hand to greet families as they enter. Stepping to the forefront, I grasp the door handles and throw the gates to arcade spirits wide. <laughs> welcome, welcome to all of you. I hope that yep. Oof. I don't even have time to finish one line of my big dramatic speech. The crowd spills through the doors and runs right past me. Eager to get to the doors. I need to open my headphones. Seeing as we decided to open the new arcade and restaurant in town for the launch lunch rush, I could have pulled the spot to have an in-person in the crowd. But I managed to find one having sandwiches and chatting. Thanks. Completely thanks. Much obliged. I'm glad for your little trip. I was ready to invest a good chunk of my poker face into that company. All my hard work would have come right alongside it. This this is par for the course when my siblings snatch up technology companies with the pump and dump and efforts. They stir up excitement in the acquisition and drop it once a day is told. I've never seen one of their endeavors bear fruit for very long, thanks to their short attention spans. I'm glad I could have saved I'm glad I could save you the heartache. Apologies. Oh, no offense. I think I can handle a few extra cups of hot away this one without doing as a cardiac arrest, as they tell us. Hmm. But it is good to avoid a pothole in the road of fine arts, yes? 
All the battles that I tried using will eventually profit from my own work. I approach him in what seems to be a natural lull in the conversation, although talk of finances is in itself quite a jump. So, stock market talk? Ah, oh, indeed! I like to do my trades in the morning before I come to the arcade. Give all the ball bear over so I can focus on Yuji. Worried I will seem astoundingly boring at the moment, Diva? Just too overly serious gentlemen talking about finance. It's fine. I'm adulting at 110% efficiency today. I may start in a new business myself. I should probably learn about how like money works. Hey, what would you like to know about? I plan to rent a chocolate thousand fountain, a DJ, and a bouncing castle. Six night cruising party. How can I file those as business expenses? Um. I'm not certain my accounting wizardry could protect me from the IRS on that one. It does sound like an excellent shindig, but I think I'll pounce. Plus, it's in the grass. Regardless, you shouldn't worry too much about the arcade finances. That's why you hired me, after all. The two sink deeper and deeper in the conversation about currency exchanges, fiscal policy, and tax rate changes. Well, aside from being just pissed. I admire their passion, but there's only so much a gentleman can handle in one day. I might need to reserve some for later. I stand on notice Dave's voice is what I meant by Zeta. I don't live in an odd situation and I'm interested to see out. But they are talking a bit louder than others. Miss, I've run your credit card twice, and it was declined twice. Man, this sucks. Run it again. I'm telling you, I, it was working just fine earlier. I got tokens using it. See? See these tokens? Something an opportunity to provide excellent customer service and further prove my adulting chops by stopping to help. Hello, good morning. I am the manager here. Can I be of some assistance? She looks awfully familiar. Has they met before? Oh, right. I invited her to check out my arcade, didn't I? Guess that's why she's here. What's up? Hey, hey, hey. Good to see you. The attitude's on at the place. Just love it. There's something wrong with your credit card reader. That card's legit. I was using it earlier with no issues, but... Now I've got enough help and stuff. Can you help me? I can use cash if I gotta. I'm not trying to jack and run on you, but I'd really prefer to use the card. Fortunately, I happen to have an expert in all things digital in my employ. We can clear up your credit card problem nice and quick. Oh, Iris. Iris, online. Sure thing. Miss, can you please swipe your card across my screen? Just take the customer by surprise. She hesitates briefly before doing her best. Right, we have an Iris. I remember that. Now processing. Please enjoy this recorded music. Bad command or file name? Huh, that's odd. It says your card was declined. Cancelled even. No helping it. I'm sure this is just a misunderstanding, but whatever. I've got cash, plenty of cash. It's no problem at all. I'll take care of this myself. Thanks for trying. She quickly goes about her business using a fistful of ones and various business names to pay her way through. She seemed a little eager to get out of here, actually. That's odd. Really odd. I might need to keep an eye on that one. With that matter settled, it's back to wandering the arcade. Hmm, what's your next? Most of the time I'm drawn to showtime stage with some flashing lights and quick beats. Not because it's completely silent. No music at all. The entire place I see Naomi's feverishly working the pixels. Seeing the whole thing without seeing the sync with flashy lighting in the way it clearly needs. Sounds depressing. And listening to Naomi mutter while she works just undoubtedly feels the same way. Oh. This was working fine earlier. Why isn't it working now? Ugh. Fortunately, Teo is proving surprisingly knowledgeable about the inner workings of his favorite game. 
You made me crazy, image the hard drive. I know some gray area website where we can get a replacement copy of the file if you want. This is the third released version of Proton State software, right? Those are easier to come by than the most modern fourth version, oddly enough. The files aren't the problem. I think the hard drive itself is damaged and shipping. If so, well, I don't think we would have the damage at all today. I just have to order a new part. I'm sorry. There are just so many games to get up and running. I must have missed the ticking time bomb or the hardware failure. Hey, it's cool. I don't need to get my groove on it all the time. Proton Stage is one of the classic games. It's wacky, exciting, and Hero of Dance means playing with cannon. Hey, I think the opening video is quality. <coughs> this isn't the only game we have which uses a hard disk, right? Can we pull and reformat ROM from another game using clear files to make it a clone of Proton Stage? Well, it means voluntarily disabling one of our other games, but... Hey! I know! Wild Rider! That piece of poop is always crapping on us, and it's not like it's very popular. Let's change the drive from that and make it a Showtime stage drive! Yeah! I can get that up and running in an hour! Sounds perfect. I'll send you the files, go get a bite to eat, and we'll be back in time to show everyone what a great dance community we've got here at Arcade Spirits. It'll take a bit of time, but we'll get our stage back in no time. Good. Good. Then we'll get through opening day without any major problems with such a mess. Before I go, I spot a gamer who has been watching, super curious about what's going on. Hey. Showtime stage really has. For now, yes. Well, we'll have it fixed as, up as soon as we can. Oh man, I wanted to get my groove on. That's a bummer. You know, I might know a guy who knows a guy who can get you a replacement super cheap. Or like, any game you want. Anything. As long as you, you know don't ask too many questions. Uh... No reason to be mean, I have tonight shared what's likely meant as an open invitation to do crimes. I'm happy to see your enthusiasm for Arcade Spirits, but I think we can handle this. Sorry you can't play your favorite game right now, but it'll be fixed soon. The gamer shrugs it off, not too offended. It's a cool studio. I just figured I'd offer. I dig this place. They've got a little bit of everything I like. I'll just come back later to wow a lady with my hot style. Later. That was odd. But as he fades back into the crowd, I decide to move on. Where should I visit next? Near the center of the arcade, Ashley's showing off her new crossfit with the Team B. Wow. Just wow. She's been keeping it a total surprise from all of us, working in secret on it. Impressive stuff. I think I've attracted the attention of a brand new customer, at least. Don't I remember them from Jekyll's Tavern? Now I'm getting some calls and someone was hogging the bartender's attention. Hey, look, Diva! A room like any hall in Mayberry. Hiya! Welcome to Arcade Spirits! We're so happy to have you join us for opening day! Oh, thank you. <laughs> hmm, I probably like to pull Team B aside and talk things over with them. It's probably best not to air any dirty laundry in front of the customers. I'll just wait until it's a more opportune moment. Oh, yes, you young one. No Diva here, but you chose us. Well, I've uh, never used a joystick before in my life. I mean, I've mostly been to Jekyll Palace or played games on my phone. Touch screens and stuff like that. I've never really been much of a gamer, but all my friends are here too, so I was hoping I might try one out. Whoa! Not Diva, we once played on a 
is our stuff. Can you believe it? Yes, we've all been there, and that's what we're talking about now. Aww. But that's just too cute. I want to be young and innocent again. And don't worry at all. Arcade Spirits is the right place to learn. We are a friendly, inviting sort of arcade. No mad skills required. Here, it's all about having fun. <laughs> oh, yes. And you know what's super fun? Learning how to play Fist of Discomfort. Trust me. Wanna go a few rounds? I'll even spot you some pairing. Being friendly is fun. Actually, quickly tries to offer something else. Nah. Or, or you could join me for a round or two of TMNT. Nothing like a friendly, cooperative brawler game to ease you into things. Nope. No way. The best way to learn is to jump headfirst into the deep end, they say. No regrets. Just mashing buttons and moving that joystick. And when you're starting with the hottest title, you've got a built-in community to learn from right at your fingertips. But turtles. Turtles who are ninjas? Um, looks like I might need to jump in and persuade this kid to choose a game. He doesn't look like Beaver Captain Comfort. I think you should ease into things. If you just want to try a game of physical controls, why not a driving game? No touchscreen, no tickets. Do an open world. Uh, I guess that could be fun. Oh, okay, I'll give it a shot. Great. Come on! Hang on! I wanted to kick that kid's little butt. I sorta of wanted to I sorta of wanted to watch you kick that kid's little butt too, but we can stop, sweetie. We want them to have a great time on opening day. Oozing is a part of learning though. All arcade games end in a fail state. The trick is to practice, practice, practice until you can drop off the scene. Speaking of the scene, you can't miss the fact that Beaver Kids Back Force 5 is a birth of actual slime. Bye bye I gotta get back to piling the floor, looking for other newbies. See ya! Later. Yeah, one of my favorite birding needs is a story from Trotter. Later. I want to stop her and talk about what happened earlier. The students need it. The shark grew in from the raging waves and had no mind. She's not ready to talk yet. Also, we're doing it like on opening day. Can you be patient? <laughs> it takes a sec to settle down. Time for me to move on. Before I can continue my wanderings, Gavin pops up directly in my path. Doc, what are you doing? I look towards the door without making it look like you were looking for me in specific. I. What? Okay, what am I pretending not to be looking for? For Jean de Cave. I have no idea who that is. The top arcade critic in the city. She review her reviews can make or break an arcade. Easily. I didn't think she'd keep coming here as long as some little independent arcade is beneath her interest, but apparently she's made an exception. If you don't want to end up smeared across every website she writes for, I suggest you go play nice and show her all the positives of Arcade Spirits. Okay, I'm on it. I'm desperate for you. Be prepared to abandon me if next time, my bad. Best of luck. I easily spot her thanks to Gavin's quick cues. Considering this morning lacked the usual classic appearance on my first day at the Fun Fact, I say we're off to a great start. I'm sure this reviewer will appreciate that. Wearing my most professional smile, I stroll over to the entrance. You. I remember you. Oh no. Oh no. My dear, wonderful Doc had a miserable time in your arcade at that birthday party. You just stood back and let that horrible woman say terrible things about me. Well, this arcade was fun while it lasted. 
might as well burn it all down in passes and build a new arcade on those ashes 100 years from now after this blows over. Before I can try to defend myself, she holds up a hand as silence. Now, while I seriously question the wisdom of allowing you to run an arcade, and would love nothing more than to give you zero stars and walk away immediately, I am unfortunately committed by ethical standards to still and properly view your establishment in a relatively unbiased fashion. So as unpleasant as this may be for both of us, I suggest we remain professional. Even if you've dug yourself a rather deep hole to climb out of, it's my view. Understood? Even if I want to go on a tirade, or chew her out, I gotta think of the arcade. This isn't some rando angry churn. Not this time. I feel like chewing dry grass, but I need to swallow my pride on this. Understood. Excellent. What I need from you now is to stay out of my way. No special treatment for or consideration. I need to observe your arcade and have a disinterested outside party so that I can judge your facility and atmosphere. But rest assured, if I see some egregious mistake, I will bring it to your attention pointedly. My readers, likewise, will become very aware of your shortcomings. I do my best to support consumer activism, and that requires absolute honesty of any difficulties I observe. So until such time as I require you, I suggest we speak no further. Agreed? Sure. Fine. As you were, then. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Not only does she hate us right off the bat, but I can't even leap to the defense of what we've built here without antagonizing her further. Time for me to talk to with Gavin about how to save our kids here from the inevitable negative review. Nothing else I can do now but pray to the arcade gods that everything from here on out goes perfectly. Once again, I wander the floor, but this time, while it's all smiles and pleasantries on the outside, I'm left all alone battling my thoughts. This is certainly not helping my anxiety, mind you. Being under a magnifying glass means anything that can go wrong, will go wrong in spectacular fashion. Reported on across every arcade enthusiast website in existence. No, wait, stop stopping me. Don't assume things will go wrong. Besides, this morning wasn't too eventful. Who's to say the afternoon will be a disaster? And the afternoon was a disaster. I knew I had spoken too soon, the second I saw Gavin approaching me with a twinge of worry here in his brow. Utterly ridiculous. It shouldn't be possible for us to be out of knockers on a vending machine this fast, and yet, we are. Gavin's receipts were ordering exactly enough to fill them up, and yet, there were only a few bags in there. A missed delivery, perhaps? And that was the least of our problems. Eva, we got an electrical problem. These are the retro games I've shorted out. I don't understand. I tested the power supply. Outright, he rebuilt a few of them. Unless someone's seriously stuffing their speakers and shocking the coin boxes, we're talking a failure somewhere in our electrical wiring. Calamity after catastrophe, they just kept piling up. What? All of the toilets stopped working. All of them. We need to call a plumber fast and... Not the one that jumps on turtles. Anxiety. Yeah, it's me. Hmm. I still haven't made any stunts. I, uh, uh, whoa. I'm freaking out. I'll admit that. I'm freaking out. Do you think we should close down for the day? Iron out the wrinkles? Try again tomorrow? You're hastily losing over something. And if I don't say, if I don't say anything, we may as well call it quits. I must refocus our energies. Oh, okay. We we can um look. I know you're asking me to be the leader here, but I'm not really the expert when it comes to any of this. I need your help. Can you 
I trust you. Each of you knows how to deal with problems like this. If you really dig deep and think about it, what do you think you should do? I gave the stranger's nervous glances, then thankfully stopped to breathe and think. Ooh! I will become the plumber we need. I mean, not exactly, but I'll grab a plunger and uh, do what I can. We'll have to close down the bathroom for now, but I'm sure we can convince one of our neighbors to loan us theirs, maybe? I'll check next door with them before I go. You gotta look like demonically possessed playlist. Um. And while I say this vending machine issue is human error, I have enough proof of my own error checking to say this human is not responsible. I'll make some calls to our distributed agency where the train broke down. Also, see about ordering some quick replacement stuff. Hmm. It needs a bit more complex. I, I need to replace the fried power supplies, but I can do that. I can do most of those today. Meanwhile, I'll put a feeler out to the East Arcade community online. See if we can get an electrician with an arcade experience out of here quickly. I've been meaning to get back into online groups, and even if it means popping my head up in a crowd, I'll do it. Okay, good solutions, people. Good solutions. I won't be able to work the floor while I'm cleaning our restroom, Siva. Are you going to be good with covering for me? Things seem to be getting more intense as the day ticks out. You three focus on your task at hand. I'm new to the boss, but I was a floor attendant originally. I can handle whatever arcuteric throws at me. Got it? Gotcha! But I'm changing out of this first. I don't want to get pooey water all over my army mascot. Toodles! I'm on it. You can count on me. If all three busy, that leaves me in charge of every problem that may emerge for the rest of the afternoon. No way to tap out with someone to help me with these situations. Multiple tasks to get every problem before Siva can't leave any stones unturned this time. No risk of setting something spiral out of control. Sorry, I mean, I have to. No choice. Feeling partially invigorated, I start my floor check. There are problems all around. But what should I tackle first? Mm. The retro television based video game Video Wall was an idea I came up with during the innovations. Naomi runs the whole thing off a cheap mini computer too, practical and inexpensive, and it gives it just the perfect amount of play. And I've been pretty proud of it up until this moment. For some reason, it's showing a nature documentary about cute and fluffy bunnies instead of retro music videos and arcade high scores. Not that bunnies are bad thing necessarily, there are so many worse things that could be playing, but it's still not playing what I want it to play. Something is amiss. And I've been hunting around for the remote control we keep at the prize desk, sure, at Berkeley. Bunnies, huh? Yep, bunnies. Interesting choice, Siva. Not my choice, still. I'll have to think. I'll have it fixed in a moment. Okay, cool. I was wondering if they suddenly experienced a paradigm shift in arcade gaming or something. The bunnies are really cute, though. Grabbing the remote, I flip it back to channel 3, which should take the video feed from Naomi's system, and it flips back to the bunnies on channel 5 a few seconds later. Persistent info. It's almost like they're rabbits themselves. So I flip back to channel 3, and nope. Once again, error goes back to 5. Okay, visually we're dealing with a massive hacker, one who can modify the normal system despite having no physical access to it. An individual capable of truly hacking the planet. Yeah, or it's a prankster with a universal TV remote. I got one of those myself, helps me turn off overly loud TVs and bars which drown out the beats of whatever game we're playing. Not that I would ever do that, mind you. Joking kids. But with great power comes great responsibility, and clearly whoever's forcing us to watch this lacks the latter. How about we go subtly check the crowd to see if anybody's got a clear line of sight and a shrinking gadget at the video wall each time we change it? I'll stop for help, so I'm not going to deny Pierre's offer. Sure, go for it. The war for remote control continues for another minute. 
back and forth from music videos to documentaries about rabbits, and now a training in neutering, which I'm seriously hoping does not count as pornography, or it will be yet another block mark against us for certain arcade critics. It's only been a few minutes, but it feels like an eternity of populating Agamars before Sayer returns. Found him. Orange jacket. Standing near the pinball section. Okay. No worries. Anything for you, DJ. I roll up the sleeves of my hoodie. I'm ready to put an end to this. Wait a minute. Isn't this the arcade movie from earlier? He didn't seem like a troublemaker at the time. What's going on here? Nope, it's definitely this kid. I can see the tiny plastic gadget in my hand briefly before they toss it. Perhaps when they see my approach, the teenager will stealth and get the natural one, resulting in an awkward and obvious attempt at looking like an unimportant part of the crowd. Hey. I didn't do anything. I mean, um, I good to see you again. What's up? How are things? Given this living bundle of nervousness, I'm not sure I feel like coming down was a ton of work for Nepal Ken. But rules are rules, right? This one may be grumpy and twitchy sort, but the rules are the rules. I need to play fair. I'm afraid I need to ask you to leave the other day. Wh who am I? No one. You're deliberately interfering with our video systems. Management reserves the right to refuse service to anyone breaking the rules. I need to go. Oh, don't be mad at me. I feel like an ass back in that mode. I walk, hurrying through the crowd and out the door. What's going on here? Shaking my head, I return to looking for the other seven spots. As I hear the clang and moaning of someone assaulting a cabinet, I see Percy holding up his finger to grab my attention. I motion for him to join me, and he does. Thank goodness, the crowd took out Ashley, but she was in a hurry, brandishing a plunger like it was some sword. There's so much going on right now. What's happening? Some hooligan working his way down the rest of the alleys and smacking around the joysticks like a speed dial. I swear he was gonna knock over our jack. That's just... That's how hard you're shoving that cabinet. DJ has been avoiding going near him ever since he started raging out. It's causing quite the scene. I'll take care of it, Percy. <laughs> Be careful, love. I don't think I don't like the looks of this one. He places a hand on my shoulder in solidarity before leaving. This happens more often than you think. Someone getting so mad at a game that they start smacking the cabinet around. Unlike pinball, which will go into tilt mode to punish you, the only justice to be found here is my justice. I am the arcade law. You cracking piece of crap at game. I totally jumped over that cock and barrel. Cock and monkey and cock and any cock and barrels. He and his law are a little less than eager to bring the law down on her with that. I'm in awe of the size of this lad. He probably eats six whole hams for breakfast and then presses pickle sticks for fun. But I know my duty. I know what I must do. Let's keep this simple. Sir, we have a strict policy against damaging our games. I need you to stop that immediately. And who the cock are you, huh? Oh, good. That's what I need. From the corner of my eye, I spot Mrs. Bethune watching. That's a history tool. I'm the manager here, and I have a right to eject any customer abusing the game. I suggest you play nicely if you want to stay in the arcade spirit. Understand, sir? You little. But oddly, his attention is diverted to something or someone behind me. It's only for a couple of seconds, but my whole demeanor changes after that. Fine. He storms off, deciding he'd rather have the last word than argue it further. I don't need to see who or what exactly changed his mind after that storm. But the crowd's too thick. Whoever or whatever it was is gone now. And Mrs. Bethune returns to the crowd without a comment. Hopefully quietly approving of my law bringing. This is odd. I 
I guess I won as a man. Now then, what problem for Gaston? Are you cocking kidding me? Tanvi casts a sharp glare at someone who's about to play the idle fist of discomfort machine she's guarding, dissuading them. Then looks down at her phone again, frantically keying in commands. Right, that's sorted out. What's going on? What the f Some caca tried to hijack my streaming account. I don't get it. May we not put those dinky mini computers to stream games videos ourselves? I made the security re recommendations myself to avoid this sort of thing. But it looks like our new experimental tech will allow celebs like me to walk up to a game and start streaming. It has a few holes. I stepped away for a few minutes to hit the bathroom, which is a disaster zone, by the way, and got an alert on my phone that someone tried to log into my account. They didn't count on my two-factor authentication, at least. I'll admit I'm not silicone literate enough to know how the streaming rig these two came up with works. I just allocated some R&D funding for them to make it happen. The specifics are beyond me. Apparently, the trouble's drawn the attention of the ever-watchful Mrs. Fame. Wonderful. Okay, Mommy's busy fixing up power supplies, but grab her and ask her to turn off the streaming add-on for now. Just until we sort this out. Great. Just great. Today could not be worse for you and me, could it, Diva? Let's just get on with it and solve the problem directly in front of us. With Naomi busy and Ashley battling toilets, I have only one option to turn to for technical assistance. Iris, can you check the security camera footage to see who messed with the Fist of Discomfort machine while Queen Bee wasn't looking? Maybe that'll help. Iris online. Already on it. I've been analyzing the video feeds ever since she mentioned hacking was afoot. Nobody hacks my friends and gets away with it. It looks like the next person to approach the machine was a tall man with blue sunglasses. You think he did it? He accessed the USB slot streamer used to log into our new tech, but wasn't streaming anything, or even playing the game. He just plugged in a small device, waited, then left. From the access logs, I'd say he's our culprit. I'm on it. Thanks, Iris. It doesn't take long to track the guy down. For starters, there's his rather unique fashion sense. Also, he's plugging into another of our stream-friendly games without playing it. That's an extremely obvious tell. Kind of hard to give him benefit of the doubt or even a second chance. He clearly broke the rules of the arcade. Although he looks like the sort who would break me if I break the news to him badly. I should choose my words wisely. Ones that involve me staying in one piece. No sense letting the guy off the hook. We keep this simple and clean. Sir, I'm the manager of this arcade. I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. Immediately he straightens up, looming large over me, in a rather threatening fashion. I'm sorry, what was that, manager? You telling me to leave? You heard me. At first I think he's going to bounce me out the door instead of bouncing himself, but with a growl he backs down. Fine, it's your call, buddy. Yours alone. He walks right out the door, without another word. I'm left in a state of utter confusion as our exchange. That seemed suspiciously easy. But a win is a win. With that in the bag, I quickly look around to see if there are any other nearby problems I can address. Before I can continue my quest to purge my arcade of evildoers, I'm interrupted by an onslaught of my hard-working staff. Hmm. I knew it. I knew it. Diva, about our missing inventory. Oh. When I get my hands on whoever did this, I found the electrical problem, Diva. Sabotage. Sabotage and treason. An enemy ag agent walks among us. Okay, so we have some insight to what's causing all these messes, but it's a chaotic jumble right now. One at a time, please. 
are suspicious that the little snack inventory was indeed not human error. The delivery truck never arrived here. It was routed to a garbage dump due to a computer error. Or, as I suspect, malfiance. And malfiance explains our electrical problems, too! Remember my joke about someone scuffing their feet and shocking the coin boxes? Nope! That's actually what happened. An electrical, an external shock, not a grid failure. Someone's got a battery or some other shock prod and was using it to crash games. Must be the same someone who flushed a bunch of wadded up paper towels and firecrackers down the toilets. It's a war zone in there. I was able to dredge up one of the super gross chunk of it, but we need a professional plumber to get the rest. This is all sounding way too suspicious to be a random act of hooliganism. And it also ties into what I've been ha handling on the floor. Hmm. I've had to deal with pranksters all afternoon, too. I even had to kick a few of them out the door. I've been so busy playing firefighter running from blaze to blaze that with a leaky bucket, and I haven't been able to put the pieces together. But now it's clear. I know what I must do. Okay, I think I've got a good idea of who's behind this. Or at least I, someone who knows what's going on. I'll go deal with them while you three finish cleaning up the mess. Are you sure? Maybe you should have some backup. I don't know how to fix power supplies, hire plumbers, or order new snacks. I need you to help me with those things. <laughs> Uh, two of those things sound like something a manager should know how to do. i just throwing that out there. You can count on us, Diva. Very well, but keep us informed, please. We're all in this together. And with a nod of solidarity, all of us split up, each on our own mission, to thwart the ne'er-do-wells. I'm not particularly thrilled to begin this conversation. My nerves haven't stopped jangling since this morning, but, well, my friends are counting on me to lead, to be the responsible one. I can't voice this off on a Gavin like I might have done at the Funplex. Finding my quarry isn't particularly difficult. She's been in the background the whole time, watching and waiting as I ran around trying to put the lid on the mayhem. Her eyes study me as I approach. Grinning ear to ear. Hiya! Hi! Hello there! Figured it out, huh? Yeah, I can't say I understand the why, but I at least know the who. The matching fashion style was a big, pretty big clue. I guess a formal introduction's in order. Yeah, okay. The name's Sue. Natural born leader, hacker extraordinaire, and leader of the Ghost Monsters, the hottest gang on these streets. Pleased to meet ya. She playfully curtsies, her wicked smile never ceasing. And yeah, I guess my friends were a little wild and crazy, leaning a bit heavy on the pranks. And okay, you booted some of us out. Not all, just some. That's cool, I mean, it's your house and your rules. You're the sheriff here and you lay down the law. And I respect that. Let me make it up to you, okay? Sue steps back and taps a button on her smartwatch. And from the crowd of gamers, her whole gang assembles. Even the ones I told to get lost. Gang, this is... What's your name again? Mix in your face. Gang, this is Diva, Diva, this is Inky, Blinky, Pinky, and Clyde. Now then, she turns to face her ghost monsters. You were all very, very naughty, and I'd say they're owed an apology. A big fat I'm sorry from each of you. Don't you agree? Each of them mumbles a semi-coherent, semi-sincere apology. Yeah, whatever. Sorry. Real sorry. Gosh, I'm so sorry, Mix in your face. I'm really sorry. 
When they finish, Sue faces me once again. There! Everybody's sorry, which means everybody's forgiven, correct? Because, and this is me being real with you, I like this arcade. I really do. It beats the crap out of Deco's palace, that's for sure. I can easily see this being our new home, you know? I admire what you've done with the place. It's totally awesome, and I'm really looking forward to coming back. Again and again. I definitely don't want to end our first day here on a sour note. No, no. I'm so glad we can communicate like adults. Apologize for being naughty and move on. Now, okay, we may still ruffle a few feathers while we're here, but that's cool, right? I'm sure you understand that it's all fun and games. Nothing personal. So, what do you say, friend? All's forgiven. I pause, taking in everything Sue rambled on about. Let me get this straight. You scare our customers, mess with our television sets, smash up and short circuit our games, clog our toilets, redirect our mail orders, come back here after I explicitly told you to get lost, try to hijack Queen Bee's streaming account, and you want me to smile and let you come back tomorrow? My words barely phase her, that grin still lingering. Yep. Yeah, that sounds about right. I love this arcade, and I think we could be great friends. What do you say, partner? Waiting for my response, she holds out a fist bump. As the duly ordained arcade pope, I hereby absolve you of all your sins in the name of the frog, the monkey, and the holy yellow circle that eats all the dots. <laughs> no! Actually, you're all banned from the arcade. Get lost or I call the cops on you all. Get wrecked, kid. And Sue just laughs. She laughs and laughs as if I've posted a funny cat video not made a direct threat. Oh, friend, you don't want to get the pigs involved. No, no. I mean, if you really feel you need to, go ahead. Call them. It's cool. We'll go quietly. And be back the very next day. I've... We've got friends in high places. We don't sell drugs or weapons. We sell information. And information, as a currency, is far more valuable than what other gangs trade in. So just smile, nod your head, and say, Yes, Miss Sue, you and your friends are always welcome here. You don't want to see what I can do with the push of a single button. So now you're threatening me. I'm just telling you how it is. What you do now is entirely up to you. Before she can continue her tirade, we're rather rudely interrupted. Oi, Sue, what the hell you think you're doing here? The thick tension that surrounded us melts away, redirected to the new challenger, all eyes glare towards them. Oh, great. Okay, Diva, hold that thought. I got business to attend to. Damn right you do! Ghost monsters don't operate south of 23rd Street. You damn well know this is lovely chainsaw territory. Get lost or get tossed. If I wasn't confused before, I sure as heck am now. All I can do is watch this unfurl before me. With a clap, Sue summons her buddies to her side. I'm sorry, south of what? I don't recall signing any non-compete agreement with you, darlings. Ghost monsters for life! Oh, ghost monsters? This locker room gossip queen is disrespecting your fearless leader? What do you say to that? Nobody does a sue on my watch. Nobody. Yeah, and I ain't scared to hit a chick. I'm an equal opportunity, socially maladjusted individual. Think you've got your answers, ladies. Now, then, let's rumble! Well, to their credit, they didn't throw the first punch. But we're talking Han didn't shoot first levels of moral high ground here. Immediately, the ghost monsters and the lovely chainsaw are at each other's throats, grappling, punching, shoving each other. 
A baseball bat gets swung and clings off the side of a racing machine. Soda cans are thrown. Someone uproots a chair near the snack machines and that goes flying too. It's chaos. Complete and utter chaos. And it needs to stop. Now. Iris! Already calling the cops, Diva. As for me, it's funny. When you start out the day anxious about what the future may bring, once that future looks completely to poop, well, that anxiety just fades away. There's something oddly freeing about seeing the world crumble around you. There's nothing left to fear. And that means I can swing into action, ready to face it. Priority one, get the customers the hell out of here. Gavin and Ashley are already on that. I join in, trying to funnel the panicked crowds of kids and gamers out the door and away from the carnage. This way! This way! Hurry! In an orderly fashion, please! Out! Everybody out! The fight spills into the restaurant area, fortunately well after anybody eating there had bailed on the place. This just adds greasy french fries to the mix of crap being thrown through the air with the opposing sides in this game war. Damn it! I'm not letting that caca get away with this! Until now, it's been the world's sloppiest barroom brawl. Teenagers flailing at each other wildly, generally wrecking the scene rather than each other. But now, now she's pulled out a gun. Not some arcade light gun, but a real life shooting and killing gun. This is unhappening. This cannot be happening. But this is 100. This is 100% happening. The leader of the lovely chainsaw games raises her weapon and takes aim at Sue, trying to end this. But her target is conveniently tucked behind Mrs. Defame and Ashley. If I don't do something, someone is going to get seriously hurt. My mind races. Calm acceptance washes over me. This is how things will be. No helping it. One chance to do something good in the midst of all this chaos. Time slows for me like I'm trapped in a dream state. Pure instinct takes over and I start running toward them. Get down! Oh no! Diva! Holy caca, what did you- I, I was aiming for Sue! Pigs! Pigs! Run for it! Stay cool and wipe the footage first! Do it! Stay with us, Diva. Stay with us. Help us on the way. I just wanted to make a dream for everyone to enjoy. That's all. Was that so wrong? Is that what... It's what you would have done. It's what you did do for all of us. But I guess no good deed goes unpunished, huh? The in-your-face family curse. You've a strong spirit, dear. You'll get through this, I know you will. But for now, oh, you best wake up. There's still more to be done. Slowly, very slowly, I open my eyes. Soft beeping of medical monitoring greets me, as well as an angel in white. Well, an angel in a white lab coat. While they're no heavenly being, they do appear to be my doctor, armed with nothing more than a clipboard. I'm still a little hazy as they briefly explain the situation. Thanks to my wild theatrics, I startled the shooter enough that her bullet missed its intended target, and instead it went into my leg. Which hurts like caca, and apparently resulted in the surprisingly clean shot that I'll recover from in a few weeks easily. Two days in the hospital, 
a week or two on crutches, some limping, but I'll be back to 100%. And more importantly, nobody died. I can live with this momentary pain if someone else gets to live. Period. So, could have been better, could have been worse. The doctor, having given me the report, leaves to treat their other patients. But before they do, they inform me I have a visitor. At least there's a plus side. I just wonder who it is. Tanvi storms into the room and proceeds to stand before me. Her arms are crossed defensively and her brow furrows. She's visibly upset. I have a feeling like I'm about to get reamed for what I did. I'll admit, maybe it wasn't the smartest thing, jumping in front of a bullet, but I can't undo it now. I'm prepared for the consequences as I brace for impact. You dumb You... You just... Her words falter as she tries her best to keep her composure. Her frown softens. You had me so worried. Tears roll down her cheeks, and she immediately wipes them away. Don't do anything that stupid ever again. Seriously, I, I can't believe you jumped in front of a bullet. You realize you aren't some action hero, right? That brings a smile to my face. Yes. The harsh realization is setting in. I promise I won't do it ever again. Swear to me. I swear. I swear I won't get shot again. Tanvi's defensive stance melts away and her whole body relaxes as she sighs. Good. Because cause I can't bear the thought of losing you. I just couldn't imagine my life without you. She pauses, biting her lower lip. She averts her eyes, her cheeks flushing red. I love you. I love you. A lot. So there. Now you know. Even though my leg is throbbing, my heart skips a beat before I can respond. Hearing her mirror my sentiments from earlier, I couldn't help but smile. I love you too, Tanvi. More than words can begin to describe. I care for you deeply, passionately, and intrinsically. I I've never loved anyone as much as I love you. You are my everything. Oh, I couldn't bear the thought of losing you. Either, which, which is why I felt so upset earlier and let that get the better of me. Honestly, I should have taken the time to talk to you in a more collected manner, and for that, I apologize. Yeah, I wasn't perfect at discussing it either. And I'm a fool thinking that it took me almost losing you to be able to share my feelings for you. It's ridiculous. Commitment and devotion have always scared me. I've been burned hard in the past and have closed myself off from those emotions. I didn't want to get hurt again, but with you, everything just, just feels right. Yeah, it does feel right, doesn't it? Seeing you injured made me realize that I didn't want to be without you. And so, while you were recovering, I made a few calls. Talked to the demon and the other heavenly kings. Oh? I still want to be able to live in a teen house. That's my dream, and I can't give that up. But being with you is also my dream. So I was able to find a solution. <laughs> Get this. Two houses. Obviously, they aren't going to demolish the house they have now over in Japan, but we decided to open a secondary house. Here. In this city. So, how exactly will that work? Will they move over here then? Nope. No way. Not a chance. They can't all uproot and leave what they have, just like how I don't want to abandon what I have here. 
and said that they'll put me in charge of compiling my own team for here in the States. A full branch of 4-H care. I'll be scoping out hot local talent and inviting them here to play with me. Granted, I'm still going to take trips to visit, study, and play abroad with the rest of the king. But this way, I don't have to leave forever. That's... Do you think I could move in too? That way I don't ever have to leave you. It's like super creepy to say. Never ever. I oh, know you made it creepy. I, I just, I, I just, I know it's your thing, but I'm just saying I, I could help keep your bed warm after those long nights staying up late practicing. That's rather tempting. Oh, and can I be on the team too? Nope, no way. Good, <laughs> good, no. I love you. But even my love can't elevate you to the skill level you need to be at to live in this house. Sick burn. I'm just glad you're on board with all of this. Of course I am. Hanvi, you mean so much to me. You to me. I'm excited to start this new adventure with you. Tonvi steps in closer to where I'm laying, leans in and kisses me gingerly. My whole body melts as warmth spreads over my entire body. It's the morphine. Hey, thanks. Thanks for listening to me. You are the best, truly. I'll get some cock and rest. I'm out. I wish desperately to get out of this bed and follow her. But with this leg, there is no chance of that. Uh, so I'm left pining. Seeing the person I care for the most was certainly a boon to my spirit. Now if they could only do something about the food here. With my heart calmed, my body finally tells me it's exhausted. I snuggle into the covers as a yawn escapes me. Just as I'm about to roll over and drift off to sleep, another visitor drops in. It's likely well past visiting hours, but with no small amount of both dread and relief, I'm glad to see her. Nix in your face, a word, if you will. I try to straighten myself up for my pillow backrest. Time to put on my professional front teeth and if I'm in excruciating pain. Okay, um, I should start by explaining that what happened today isn't exactly indicate indicative of... I should hope it was. It's hard to disguise the disbelief on my face. What? It seems I've misjudged your character based on an initial unpleasant interaction. But what I saw today, clearly you are no fool nor a coward. I let my need to protect my family override my better judgment. How absurd to paint everything you've built at Arcade Spirits with that brush all over such a small matter. I saw you selflessly throw yourself in front of that bullet. I didn't ha you didn't have to do that. You chose to do that. It's indicative of someone who isn't simply in this for the money, as so many of this industry are. You protected your friends and co-workers. That's an, an admirable act of heroism, and one I'll not soon forget. I suppose I've become a bit jaded from all those eager to cash in on the arcade scene. All the Large-scale arcades I have to review tend to be very impersonal and cold. So, you were impressed with the arcade? Well, let's not go that far. I can't say I was thrilled with the amount of mayhem and disaster going on even before a gang war broke out. But I will also say I've only ever seen that amount of mayhem and disaster once before. It's highly unusual, to say the least. The last time I reviewed a small up-and-coming arcade similar to yours, everything went wrong. Everything. I wrote my review in an honest fashion, and as a result my, of my scathing pin, the place was sold and closed down within a month. Sold to a notable figure in this industry. Wait, you don't mean... Yes, Deco Nani. Such is the fate of any arcade with which it dares to stand up to him. 
Through prior business, the Funplex only escaped being devoured by being far too small to be worthwhile. Sadly, your enthusiasm may have put it in his crosshairs, and if you cannot tidy up your reputation after today's affairs, Arcade Spirits will be next. Again, and again, torn down by Deco Nami. This time, he didn't even have to lift a finger. By pure coincidence, the ghost monsters wrecked everything before he could exact any revenge. All he has to do is swoop in and buy out what's left of our dreams. However, I have come to a decision. Given I was a first-hand witness to your troubles, which were clearly not your fault, and given your willingness to put even your own life on the line for your arcade, I'm going to tell my editor I need more time, and I want to return in one week to get a more accurate and mature overview of your operation. One week. That's the best I can offer you. This is a difficult hole to climb out of, mix in your face. Even aside from earlier trouble, having a gang fight and a shooting transpire in an arcade, well, the press will feed on this. Even if I was the only press present and accounted for, they'll dig and they'll speculate and they'll chew on your bones. If your arcade survives that initial onslaught, I hope to write a proper review, which can lay those concerns to rest. But I'll offer you no more second chances, no more reasonable doubts. Best foot forward when I return, or my readers will know the truth. Understood? Understood. Then I'll leave you to your recuperation. With a curt nod, she turns and leaves the room, leaving me with my thoughts. One week. I've got exactly one week to completely rebuild our reputation and clear the good name of Arcade Spirits. Otherwise, it's game over for all of us. You've cleared level 7 of Arcade Spirits. A winner is you! Now let's see your score. You're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. Also, you scored 21,400 points. Woohoo! And now, let's have one last pizza fact. 62% of Americans prefer meat toppings on their pizza, while 38% prefer vegetarian. Everybody loves different kinds of pizzas, and that's a beautiful thing. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to drumroll, please? The final level? Thank you for joining me for episode 7 of Arcade Spirits by Fiction Factory Games. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment letting me know what you like down below. Please no hate or spoilers as I'm not above removing those comments and the people who make them. That's all for now, folks, and I'll see you next time.